Payment, or the lack of it, is usually an issue in the construction industry, especially in difficult times like this. So, how do you collect when others have difficulty in doing so? To encourage us to make more videos like this, please like, share and subscribe. We will really appreciate it. Thank you. The Construction Industry Payment and Adjudication Act 2012, also known as SIPA, aims to provide quick interim decision on payment issue to avoid short-term cash flow problems for contractors, suppliers and service providers in the construction industry. It provides a mechanism for speedy dispute resolution through adjudication. To qualify in bringing a claim by way of SIPA, there must be a written contract entered after 15 April 2014 relating to work carried out wholly or partly within Malaysia, including contracts with the government. However, it does not apply to contracts entered by a person for work in respect of any building which is less than four storeys high and is wholly intended for his own occupation. It also does not apply to contracts that are published in the Gazette as contracts exempted from SIPA. To initiate the SIPA proceeding, the parties will be required to adhere to the strict timeline as prescribed in the Act. The unpaid party will first serve a payment claim on the non-paying party who has 10 working days to respond. Upon the expiry of the 10 days or once a response is provided, whichever is earlier, the parties can proceed to either agree to name and appoint an adjudicator to hear the matter or request the ASEAN International Arbitration Centre, also known as AIAC, to appoint an independent adjudicator to hear the same. Because the SIPA proceeding is prescribed under a statute, even if the non-paying party disagrees to subject itself to the proceeding or chooses not to respond, the SIPA proceeding can still carry on. Hence, it is better not to ignore it. Within 10 working days of the adjudicator's acceptance of appointment, the claimant can then file an adjudication claim. The respondent will then have 10 working days to file an adjudication response and the claimant will have 5 working days to file an adjudication reply thereafter. The adjudicator will then deliver his or her decision within 45 working days upon receiving the adjudication response or adjudication reply, whichever is later. If no adjudication response is received, the 45 days shall run from the expiry of the prescribed period for the adjudication response or the parties agreed otherwise. The parties may be self-represented or be represented by any party appointed by them, including solicitors. In addition to the legal fees incurred, the parties shall in equal proportion be required to set aside a sum for the adjudicator's fee and AIAC's administrative charges, which will be agreed before his or her appointment is confirmed. Once the adjudicator delivers a decision, the losing party will be required to bear costs, which will include the adjudicator's fee and expenses of the winning party. An adjudication decision is binding unless it is set aside by the High Court, the subject matter is settled between the parties, or the dispute is finally decided by arbitration or court. In the event the decision is for the claimant, the respondent will be required to make payment, failing which, the claimant can either enforce the decision in court, suspend work performance or reduce the rate of progress of performance, claim for extension of time and expenses as a result of the suspension of performance, request for payment direct from the principal of the party against whom the adjudication decision is made, and exercise any right and remedies available in the construction contract. The aggrieved party can apply to court to set aside the decision only if the decision was improperly procured through fraud or bribery there was a denial of natural justice, the adjudicator did not act independently or impartially, or the adjudicator has acted in excess of his jurisdiction. Because the decision is meant to be an interim decision for temporary measure, the issues determined in the decision can be arbitrated or litigated again in court at the conclusion or termination of the construction contract. Basically, 
the employer will just have to pay first and argue later. It is our experience that adjudication under SIPA can be very effective, especially with contracts that have conditional payment provision such as pay when paid or pay if paid clauses, as such provision does not apply to SIPA adjudication. If you are in the construction industry and have payment issues, we hope this video provides a quick rundown of what SIPA adjudication is and how it can help you.